This is a short video on some of the reverse engineering tools within ANSYS Space Claim. The first tool that we're going to be looking at is the Auto Skin tool, also known as Wrap. This basically wraps a surface around a faceted body, STL, OBJ, BRML, a number of different formats. Um, and then you end up with a solid that you can save out as a step, IGIS, or any number of solid formats. This is found in the Tools tab. Click the Auto Skin tool, click on your part, and then click the tick box. We can see that we've run into an error, could not generate CAD surfaces, and it highlights where that error is. Generally, this error will be to do with sharps, so um, areas on the STL that have got the triangles have got sharp angles. We do have tools to fix this sort of thing, so if you do run into the error, go into the Facets tab, and you're looking at some of the cleanup tools, and the tool that we're looking for is Fix Sharps. You can see that it's found the two areas hit the tick box and they have now been fixed. I could go back into the tools tab, click the auto skin tool and then hit the tick box. This will hopefully only take about 20 to 30 seconds. What the software is doing is it's just obviously automatically putting the curves through the STL and generating patches. We can see that we're going to end up with 179 patches. Once that's finished, we will end up with a solid. So this is the resultant solid that can be saved out in any solid format. And if you need to machine from solid, you can do that. So that's one tool in space lane for reverse engineering. If you want to take a bit more of a prismatic approach rather than a more organic a wrapping approach, you can use an, another set of tools, which is basically rebuilding the model. So first we want to double click on a facet. This will give us a best fit facet. So you can see it's picked up on all of those planar faces. I'm then going to go into a sketch mode. So what that does is it drops a best fit plane along those selected facets. We can see now that if we wanted to, we could take these and turn them into actual curves, but that hasn't really given us a great result. So what I like to use is this tool down here called Move Grid. And actually manually move that grid into the model by a fraction. Right now I can extract these curves. So green is lines, blue are arcs. I'm just going to do a big box select and extract them all. And do a simple copy and paste. Copy, paste, and this is the result. You can see here that I've ended up with 26 curves. These curves probably aren't refined very well, so I don't want to end up with a load of faces where each of these curves are, but I can refine them using the repair tools, fit curves. I'm going to choose lines and arcs. I'm just going to leave my tolerance as it is, but you can change that if you wish. You can also correct tangency if you wish, so you can make these curves tangent. Hit the tick box, and we've got gone from 26 curves down to 7. I'm now going to go straight into my pull tool and we have a surface that can be extruded up or down. If I turn on my facets, I can now reference the underside of the facets using the up to tool. So I can say I want that surface to be pulled or extruded up to this point. And then with the top surface, I'm just going to pull this too far. So we can see how this fits around my faceted part. The next step is to extract the top surface. So this is a fairly doubly curved surface, this top one. What I'm going to do is double click again. That should pick up on the best fit facets along this top area. Go into my tools tab and this time I'm going to use the, the tool fit spline. We can see that that's fit a nice surface to the uh, facets that I had selected. I'm going to bring back my solid and now I'm going to split the solid with that surface. The tool that I'm using to do that is the combine tool. Select on your solid, click on your surface and we can remove this top level. So we can start to see the part come to life. 
Nextly, I won't finish this whole part, but I will just finish off one more area. So I've, again, I'm going to fit a sketch grid to this bottom face, go into a sketch mode, use that move grid tool again and dynamically move that grid up. And I'm just going to cut out this area here. So the curves I want to extract are these, this curve here. I'm holding control to select this curve and this curve. And again, I'm just going to do a copy and paste. Hide my solid and my facets and we can see what we've extracted. What I want to do is just extend these parts. So I'm just going to use a line to do that. I don't have to be too accurate. Now when I go into a pull tool, I should get a surface. Turning back on my solid, I can use this surface to create a cut. And I'll slice this through the body to create that section there. Turn back on my facets. And again, I can use the pull tool to say up to a certain level. We can then add on features. So I want to write radius on this area here. We can add a rad on and you can type in a specific value. Once you are finished reverse engineering, you might want to do a quick deviation check. So if you go into the measure tab, we can click on our deviation tool and measure between a STL body and or a faceted body and a solid body. And we can then actually probe the deviation in certain areas. So I can hold control, add these little probe points and see what the deviation is in the areas that I'm selecting. That's a quick video on reverse engineering or some of the reverse engineering tools in Ansys Base Glenn.